Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. Today I wanted to go over step by step of how to create a Mojave scissor trap. This is one of my personal favorite of the primitive traps and one that I believe would be very effective in a survival scenario. I will say that there's a lot of other videos showing how to make this trap here on YouTube and there's some really good ones so if you're interested in learning this you might want to watch several people's take and pick up some subtle differences that you'll see from one person to the next and how the trap's assembled. There's definitely some different options when you get ready to set this up but I just wanted to show the way that I've been practicing and it seems to be working well. If you follow me on Facebook and Instagram this past week I had posted some pictures and some videos of some of the Mojave scissor traps that I had been practicing on and I had a lot of questions about it and people seem to be interested in seeing the process of how to set it up so that's what today's all about so stick with me and let's get started on building a Mojave scissor trap all right to set up this Mojave scissors trap you'll need a few materials and I've gone ahead and collected up everything that I'll need these two small sticks here are a little smaller than the diameter of my pinky but you could choose these sticks based on the animal that you want to trap if you want a larger animal obviously you're going to need a larger scissor mechanism uh, for smaller animals such as squirrels maybe smaller rabbits this might be acceptable um, so these two are about 12 inches in length again size based on the trap that you're going to make this will become the scissor portion of the trap they'll be lashed at the back side with cordage and then i'll cut a couple of notches up top which will connect out to my spring pole. Uh, this is going to become a crossbar here with these two uh, what look like stakes and they basically are stakes and they'll hold this crossbar where I'll actually set my trigger and that's hard to see right now but you'll see once I set the trap up. So I'm going to take advantage of the shape of those sticks to prevent from having to lash an extra component. This is my bait stick where I'd actually put the bait for the trap and that bait stick will help support this toggle which will hold everything together for my set. The only other two materials I need is two pieces of green bendable material. In this case, I've used green grapevine because it's fairly strong and it's quite bendable. And I think I can create my arches to actually catch the trap or catch the animal in the trap with. And I'm just using some number 12 bank line for this today. You could use number 36 and I've even gone as small as number six for smaller Mojave scissor traps. So the cordage is just based on the size of the trap that you're constructing and that's based on the animal that you wanna trap. So with all that said, let's get this trap set up so you can see how it functions. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a bevel on the end of these two sticks. And basically what I'm doing with that is making a place where a hinge can operate. And so those are going to be done off at an angle just like that. Make sure that I'm carving the stick the way I want it to be. Yep. Very quick and simple there. But basically what will happen is when I lash these two together, they can pivot like a hinge. So that's the first step. Now the second step is I'm going to create a little notch at the top of this and all I'm doing is spinning the stick holding my knife stationary creating a stop cut around the top of this part of the trap. And now I'm just going to come back in with a little push cut and this will just create a nice notch in which I can attach my cordage to without it slipping off. And this may not be a fully necessary step, but I think it just gives the trap a little bit more security. So I'll complete these notches and I'll show you the finished result. All right, so you can see what those two notches look like on the end of these sticks. It's just a place for my cordage to bite up against and prevent from slipping off. The opposite end, you can see how these two go together. Just cut them off to create that angle and very simple to do that. So quick notching for this part of the trap. All right, to get started assembling the scissor portion of my trap, I've got a piece of bank line that's about 18 inches in length. And I'm gonna take a bite in that cordage, leave myself a tail of about three inches. And I'm gonna lay that bite right here next to the top of my upright, just like that. I'm gonna pinch that down with my thumb. And I'm gonna take the long end of the bank line and I'm gonna use that to wrap around itself, pinching everything in place. And I'm gonna wrap that nice and tight just like this and that'll start to hold itself in place and I'm wrapping up towards the notch just like that and on this last time around hopefully you can see this I'm going to come back through hopefully you can see what I'm showing you here I'm going to come back through my last loop around the stick and I'm just going to pull that down which is basically a half hitch against itself 
and that locks that loop nice and tight. Now, what I can do is take these two tails that I've got and just square knot those off, which is simply just an overhand knot that pulls my lashing tight, and then one more overhand knot on top of that. I'm going to cinch that all down really tight. And what I can do from there is simply take my knife, nip off those tails just to neaten everything up. Now I have a nice, neat, and tight loop on the end of my upright. And that will be the first part that helps my trap the function. All right, to get started on this next part, I'm simply gonna tie my cordage with a slip knot to one side of my scissor. Now I'm gonna orientate these two together the way I want them to actually fit. You can see, so that they can rock back and forth together. And at that point, I'm just gonna do a figure eight, lashing these two together. And I do want there to be some looseness here so that they can actually uh, rock back and forth. If you lash it too tight, your scissors won't function on the trap. Alright, so I'm just going to do that like five times through. Actually, I did four. Four looks good to me. Now I'm going to come back through the middle. Whenever we do that, we call that frapping. And I'm going to put quite a few fraps through here just to give me some separation in this. And this has to be enough so that this can actually rock back and forth. I need to slide my cordage down just a little bit right down to the bottom good now you can see that trap can open up so I know everything's right now at that point I'm just going to keep frapping to tighten this cordage all up the way I want it to be just keep wrapping in between here that'll tighten everything up help create that separation that we need for the trap to function properly Now to finish this off, I'm gonna tie a simple clove hitch, which is just making an X with the cordage over top of itself. And now I'm gonna take that tail end and come underneath both pieces of the cordage or through the center of the X, just like this. And now I'm gonna pull that tight, dress it up down to the lashing, make sure it's nice and tight, and that will hold this portion of my trap together. All right, I'm ready to attach my main line to the scissor portion of my trap and the opposite end to my toggle. To do that, I've tied just a simple stopper knot here. Now I'll take that working end of the cordage and tie yet another overhand knot around the standing end, and that creates the jam knot. A lot of people call it Canadian jam knot, slip knot, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it just creates a slip knot that will bind up against whatever you tighten it on. I use these knots all the time. They're just an excellent knot for a lot of different applications. You just work it down until the stopper knot binds, and that's it. Now that I have this side attached, I can run my main line back through that loop that we created. And now, when I attach this to the spring pole and the tree pulls, it will bind these two together, just like this. So, this portion of the trap is ready. Now on the other end, I need to connect my toggle. And I'm using about a, I don't know, five foot piece of cordage there, should be long enough. All I'm going to do on this end is create a clove hitch. Once again, you wrap the cordage around, come back over itself creating an X, and now you will run the cordage underneath the middle of the X. Now, I'm going to create a constrictor knot from that. So this is our clove hitch here. All I'm going to do is take the end of the cord and go back under and to the center of one side of that. I do have a video on exactly how to tie a constrictor knot on my channel. So if you're not familiar with that, there is a video there. But once you pull down on that thing, it really bites in and it's not going to slide off or let go very easily. All right, this is a piece of that grapevine, which I'm going to bend to create my arches. And all I'm going to do is create a point on one end. And that will make it very simple to drive this in the ground. If you notice the ground out here around me, you'll see that it's pretty muddy. So I'm using a longer piece so I can stab it in deeper into the ground and just create a more secure hold point for my trap and to catch the animal. And this is my second arch here. Also a piece of that grapevine. Just quickly shape off a point. Nothing fancy. Just make it that much easier to drive it into the ground. Quick and easy.
right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my uprights set in place here where I'm going to set my trigger. And this ground is really soft, so it should be very easy to push these down. It'll just be a little fiddling to get it fine-tuned. It doesn't look too bad right there, actually. I'll be down just a hair more. I think that'll work. All right, now to attach the cordage to the tree. And when you're attaching this to the tree, there's nothing fancy to that. Just securely knot it off. That's all that it really takes. And I'm going to tie this in such a way that I can retrieve the strap and take it with me later if I like to do that. That's basically it. Now it's time to set it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and try to set my trap for the first time. I am pulling the spring pole down with my hand, as you can see there. And I'm just going to uh, bring this toggle down and run it underneath this crossbar. I'm just holding that up with my hand. This is a little bit of a task here to get this all set up. Get my toggle where I need it. And now I just simply run that toggle up under that crossbar. And by doing that, now I have tension and it will kind of hold itself in place. Now, I'm going to take my bait stick and try to balance it in place here. My bait stick got broken off just a little bit shorter than I wanted it. It's alright, I'm going to see if I can at least set the trap just for demonstration purpose. Now I'm very careful keeping my face clear of this thing because I really don't want it to pop off and hit me in the face. Now, that's set. I'm going to be very careful here. I can see that my line to my scissors is just a little bit long. And that's not a problem. I can easily fix that. All I have to do with that is just come back around the sapling here. Just wrap it over a couple of times. And that'll easily shorten up that line. Bring this back over, see how it looks. That looks a lot better. That's perfect right there. All right, I'll give you a close-up on the trap. All right, so this is my spring pole right here, which is leaned over. You can see my cordage is tied off, nothing fancy there. And it runs down here to the ground with my trap. I'm using these two uprights with the crossbar. The only thing holding this crossbar in place is the tension from my toggle and my spring pole. You can see that bait stick where everything balances here on the toggle. And then, of course, this is the grapevine, which I bent over and stuck into the ground to create my archways. All right, so this is the scissor portion of the trap. And basically, you would funnel off the sides and the back of this trap so that the only way the animal can get through here to this bait stick is through the scissors. And when he comes through and takes the bait, he sets the trap. And with that, you can see I've got a nice hold here. I mean, I can't pull that stick out. Uh, so if it was a squirrel or chipmunk or an animal of that size, he would easily uh, be dispatched with this trap. A couple of key things that I think are worth mentioning with this trap. Number one, it's important to scale the trap to the animal that you want to catch. This trap would be probably effective on large rats, squirrels, chipmunks, that type of game. It's just important to scale your trap, your components, and your engine to the animal that you're trying to catch. The second thing that I think is very important to remember is that with this trap, you have to funnel the animal to get him to go into the trap. If he can get around to that bait from any other direction, there's a chance that he's not going to be caught because only coming through the front of this trap will be a successful catch. All for so primitive you... traps, this is not the easiest, but I think it's one of the most effective because it has such a sensitive trigger. And again, I like it because it's a very fast killing trap. It's not going to make the animal suffer for a long period of time. You're not going to have him dangling in a tree somewhere. This is going to kill him, sort of like a Connor bear trap in a way. And I like that about it. But again, that trigger is just so sensitive. You just barely touch it. And man, that really gets the animal good. The way I did this with the crossbar, I actually caught it against this crossbar and these arches. It's kind of interesting. I'll show you what that looks like. This would have been a great catch right here had that animal to come in just a little bit further in the trap. This probably would have broken his neck right here against this crossbar. And I still have him caught here in this portion of the trap. It's a pretty good catch right there. Doesn't always happen that way.
So again, Mojave Scissor Trap, add it to your arsenal. Just one more of those survival skills we hope we never need, but it's good to know, and most importantly, it's fun to practice. I appreciate your time and interest in tuning into the channel. I hope that you'll stick around, come back for more videos again very soon, and until that next one, take care and God bless.